Two of the most popular adjustable dumbbells in the world are the Bowflex 552s and the Nua Bells. A company made a budget option that combines both of these called the Flybird Adjustable Dumbbells. These are them, and today we review and compare them. Let's do it. Hey guys, it's Scoop from Garage Gym Reviews. Today we have a special review for you today because we're reviewing adjustable dumbbells. And you're asking yourself, Coop, I'm pretty sure you reviewed every adjustable dumbbell out there. And you would be kind of right, but you'd also be wrong because I haven't reviewed these if you like adjustable dumbbells or any other piece of equipment that would fill a home gym, then you would like me. Well, you would like us at Garage Gym Reviews. That's what we do for a living. So if you like to see those, make sure you subscribe. But today we are taking the highest rated and I would say most value oriented, which kind of makes sense for Amazon, adjustable dumbbell that's found on Amazon. This particular set and their lighter weight set, which have similar construction, have over 3,500 reviews and over 4.7 stars out of five on Amazon. You know, you're like, ah, Amazon reviews, how do you trust them? But I think it points to, man, they sell a lot of these things. I think out of every adjustable dumbbell I've reviewed, this one probably has more reviews online than any other. I will compare to some of the higher end models. I'll also compare to some of the lower end models. If you're in the market for a lower priced adjustable dumbbell, these are ones I think you should be looking at, but you should be considering versus others. And I'll talk about why. Let's get into it. These are the Flybird Adjustable Dumbbells, a really creative name from a really creative company. But these are an adjustable dumbbell that use some features from some of the higher end dumbbells and combine them with some cheaper end components and they're missing some features and I'll talk through it. But I think overall have somewhat of a compelling case. So if you come in here, these are featuring cast iron plates. So when you think of like typical plates that are on adjustable dumbbells, they're not typically cast iron. That has benefits and negatives. The benefit is they will last forever. Like they're cast iron, nothing's gonna happen to them. You could drop them and I wouldn't drop them. They suggest not dropping them. But if the plate itself hit, it's not gonna get hurt. It's the other parts of the mechanism that would actually get hurt. But you can tell by the design, it's using the tray design. And the tray design, the first dumbbell I can think of that came out with a tray design was the Bowflex 552s. That doesn't mean they're the best. They have a lot of inherent problems. And these somewhat overcome some of those, and one of the ways they overcome them is they're using a more durable material for the plate. It's an actual cast iron plate. Now here's the downside, is they don't have as many options for increments. One thing that's unique about these is they go all the way from 11 pounds to 55 pounds. I freaking get annoyed when they do uneven weights. The reason they do that is because they're actually in kilograms, and then they just decide, let's not make a different weight. We don't wanna do a different mold for the dumbbell. We'll just put 11 pounds on here instead of making a different mold and making it more for the imperial system but man freaking annoying now you're like oh that's a decent amount of weight for most people that's probably fine but here's really kind of the problem is they only go in 11 pound increments so when you're looking at say the bow flexes of the world you just see the max weight and you're like they're comparable 55 pounds for bow flex 55 pounds for flybird but this is the kind of issue you have to overcome is these are not in two and a half pound increments like Bowflexes. There are some benefits here. Number one is they're using a different adjustment system. The way this changes is with the handle. So the handle actually spins versus Bowflex, which is a very good design. Like I love this feature. I've used Newbells ad nauseum. I talked about them a ton. I love this feature. So when I want to switch the weight, I don't have to individually change one side and the other head, I can do it both sides at the same time using one handle and it's extremely quick. So I can go from 11 pounds to 55 pounds like that because it can go either way, which I think is pretty interesting. So there's 11 pounds, there's 55 pounds. That's pretty cool because it's using a similar mechanism as Newbell, but it's also using a similar disc design as Bowflex. That feature is awesome. There's no other dumbbell that I can think of that you can go that quickly from one to the other. This is actually faster than Newbell because Newbell is using a rod design. And so that rod design, you have to go all the way around the way. Whereas this one, you can go backwards or forwards because it's using a disc similar to Bowflex. The way that it works is I say I'm starting 11 pounds. That's the handle weight, which is a high starting weight. 
For people that are using a max of 55 pounds, I think they would like to have a lower starting weight. So five pounds would be nice, especially for like therapy work, you know, like we're talking like rear delt work. Just like when you're doing a lot of isolation work, having a start weight of 11 pounds, I think is a, a downgrade, but you're also paying a lot less for it. Now there are a few things that are very nice while you're using these about the Flybirds. Number one, again, is the quick change. So going from 11 to 55 very quickly is nice. Another thing that does matter for adjustable dumbbells is it's not a cageless design. So there's a single handle in the middle and then it feels very similar to a normal dumbbell. And what I mean by that is it's very balanced. The other thing is when I'm using them and I have them up in the resting position, getting ready to go back to do shoulder press or bench press, is it's got a nice, comfortable end to the design. It's not even flat, it's like almost convex in some way. Like it's like more of a round top uh, that's actually very comfortable. So it feels really good. And then when I go back to press and I'm pressing, it feels very balanced in hand. And due to the weight and also the design, it's also somewhat compact. So when I look at it compared to like Bowflex 552s, it's actually a little bit more compact than those because it's using the cast iron plates, which is very nice. So I can get kind of some like contraction when I'm squeezing my chest to the top, just like that without them hitting too much, which is nice. And then when I come back up, I have the place to stand them on my legs, put them back down into the rack, and then I can switch weights very simply for supersets, drop sets, or anything like that. Now I noticed on some previous reviews, this is actually an updated version. And so what's been updated out of all this is the handle. On the listing for this, it says, new handle material, black plastic coating, increases friction, gives you an entirely new feeling. Yes, Flybird, this is a new feeling. An unwelcome feeling. It's a plastic handle. I wouldn't say this increases friction over knurling. It's got these nice ridges on here. I think for the general audience, honestly, like despite how much I like knurling, like the general consumer that's probably purchasing this product would prefer a rubber grip or this. They're more likely to use workout gloves and things like that. I'm honestly okay with it. Now, just to show you the dial system, and this is where it's connecting to the plates, these are those and they're plastic. And if I bring out like the inspiration for this idea, it's this one right here. This is the Bowflex 552. They're using, as you can see, a very similar dial system. The problem with these dials is the plastic breaks over time and it's less likely to hold this than a metal system. There's actually a guy who's like super into Bowflex Select Tech dumbbells that sells metal replacements for these. Like that's like people love these so much they want to create and DIY a version to make them better. So they make a metal version that's less likely to slip the plates out. So these, which have a history of plates slipping out of them, it just happens. This one uses the same design. So I would guess over time, these will have that problem too. And it could be worse too, because the plastic they're using does look just not as durable or hardy. I'm not saying that you're gonna have huge durability issues with these. Just understand you're buying a budget-ended focused product and it's using a design that although is good, has some problems in it. So you're probably gonna experience that too. So this really brings us to the crux of the entire idea and whether you wanna buy these is the value proposition. What's the value proposition? Because all this stuff can be mold over with a low price. You know, it's like, ah, the feature isn't there. Okay, just knock a few bucks off and then I'll consider it. And I think that's really where these line up because these individually are $189 a piece on Amazon. We'll put a link below the like button if you'd like to check them out, but you have to buy them separately. The reason they do that is because they show up as a lower price and an Amazon listing increases click-through rate. So you're just basically gonna go to it and then check it out and then you realize, oh shoot, it's not $189, it's actually $380 and that's how it works out. If you wanna buy 552s, for example, you're gonna pay around 450 bucks. Cat Barbell sells an option, it's 55 five pounds too. It's around a similar price as this. Sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more. Proform has their Rapid Strike set, which is pretty similar in design and size, up to 50 pounds, but it's quite a bit less at $260. Then you have on the higher end, new bells that go up to 50 pounds and are over $500. But the most compelling comparison, I think, are Power Block Elites. You can get Power Block Elites that go up to 50 pounds that start at 360 bucks, but are expandable. So let me go into my pros and cons. Number one, the value proposition on these is pretty good. 
So for the price, you can buy them individually if you'd like to, or you can buy them together. If you buy them together, you're gonna pay about 380 bucks, depending on the sale, sometimes less, sometimes more. You're also gonna get a design that is pretty tested and good. Another pro is that the max weight is 55 pounds. Most heavy, like true lifters are gonna want more than that, but the majority of society that's just looking to work out in their home, this is gonna be more than enough weight. So I think it meets that criteria. But let me get to the cons. So the cons is into the comparisons to other options that are out there, like these aren't the best option. Power Block Elites are expandable. They're not as quick to change, but they have tighter increments. So you can go up in smaller increments. The USA Elite model, which is made in the USA, is cheaper and is expandable up to 90 pounds. These have a quicker adjustment system, but the value I don't think is as high. Then you have the Pro Forms, which go up to 50 pounds. Again, are cheaper. You also have bow flexes, which are more proven design and go up in two and a half pound increments. They are more expensive, but it's not like crazy significant over these. Then the other problem is the weight increments. These goes from 11 to 55 pounds, but they go in 10 pound increments. Like it's just like, ah, that's annoying. And they have a high start weight at 11 pounds. So to round all this out, do I suggest these? Yes, if you want a budget option, but I don't, just to be honest, I don't think these are the best budget option that are out there. I think there are better budget options that are with a similar price vein, but if you want something that marries two components that are kind of cool and don't mind the big jumps, I don't understand why you wouldn't mind that. I think most people would, then you could go with these. But in reality, just to give you my honest take on these, I think there are a lot better options. And I'll put some links to below the like button to some better options in other reviews that we've done. I think these did well because they came out pretty early on during COVID and they got a ton of reviews and they were at a low price. They actually make an even cheaper model at up to 25 pounds which if you want a really cheap model and don't care about a ton of weight capacity, that's an option. But for these, I'd pass. Okay, this is Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. Let me know what you think about these, if you've used them or others that are in the market, and we'll see you next time. Peace.